Good morning. Good morning. We're getting started a minute late here. Sorry about that. Um, welcome to Morning Devotions with uh, Pastor Sutton here at Our Savior Lutheran. Um, there was a, an error on yesterday's e-bulletin that went out. Um, uh, I had asked Erica to include on the e-bulletin the timing for our uh, devotionals, and uh, she put 10 o'clock. It's 9.30. Uh, 9.30 here on Facebook, and then I take the recorded video, upload it to um, YouTube, and it's available at 10 o'clock on YouTube, the same the same video um, on our YouTube channel. So it's just kind of two places to get to get this out to people if they if they want to access it. So 9:30 here. I try for 9:30 here on Facebook, and uh, 10 o'clock on on YouTube, and and um, 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 Monday through Saturday. Um, you know the Monday and the Saturday ones are technically on my day off but I'm, you know I've got to have my devotional time anyway so I might as well share it with you um, so 9 30 and 10 o'clock um, so good morning again um, let's see we are today is the 17th so we are like and I didn't count this up maybe it'd be fun to count this up let's see 7 uh, 14 uh, 21 22, no, 21, 28, 30, 28 and 7, 35, 6, 7, 8, 38 days into our isolation and self-distance, close whatever proclamations from our governor on high. So here we are, 38th day in exile. Um, I think that's kind of what this is like. It's like the Babylonian exile. We've been pushed away from, from our regular worship and church and into these other ways of sharing the word and the means of grace. Um, so anyway, let's open our, our hymnals again here to uh, page 295. If you have one, we'll follow along. And, and if not, just simply listen. Um, our 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 psalm is going to be Psalm 66. Our reading is going to be the, the 15th chapter of Second Chronicles, and we'll have prayer for uh, grace, peace, and divine pardon. Let us, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As I said, we'd be having the 66th Psalm today, Psalm 66. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through river on foot. There did we rejoice in him who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid a crushing burden on our backs. You let my men ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, yet you have brought us to a place of abundance. I will come into your house with burnt offerings. I will perform my vows to you, that which my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt offerings of fattened animals with a smoke of sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. Come and hear 
all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and high praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our reading, as I said, is today is coming from um, Second Chronicles, the 15th chapter. Yeah, we're going to read the whole 15th chapter. It's only about 20 verses. In the ESV, this is entitled, Azza's Religious Reforms. So the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Azza and said to him, Hear me, Azza, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, and without a teaching priest, and without law. But when in their distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found by them. In those times there was no peace to him who went out or to him who came in, for great disturbances afflicted all the inhabitants of the lands. They were broken in pieces. Nation was crushed by nation and city by city, for God troubled them with every sort of distress. But you, take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. As soon as Asa heard these words, the prophecy of Azariah the son of Oded, he took courage and put away the detestable idols from all the land of Judah and Benjamin and from the cities that had taken in the hill country of Ephraim. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was in front of the vestibule of the house of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and those from Ephraim, Manasseh and Simeon, who were residing with them. For great numbers had deserted to him from Israel when they saw that the Lord God was with him. They were gathered at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. They sacrificed to the Lord that day from the spoil that they had brought, seven hundred oxen and seven thousand sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their soul. But that whoever did, would not seek the Lord, the God of Israel, should be put to death, whether young or old, man or woman. They swore an oath to the Lord with a vo loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and horns. And all Judah rejoiced over the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart and had sought him with their whole desire, and he was found by them. And the Lord gave them rest all around. Even Makah, his mother, King Asa, removed from being queen mother because she had made a detestable image for Asherah. Asa cut down her image, crushed it, and burned it at the brook of Kidron. But the high places were not taken out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was wholly true all his days. And he brought into the house of God the sacred gifts of his father and his own sacred gifts, silver and gold and vessels. And there was no more war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's a great verse for you coming from the prophecy of Azariah, the son of Oded, right out of scripture. He says, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. In a lot of the Old Testament, in a lot of the things that take place in, in the time before the Christ, and a little bit after, but we'll get into that. In a lot of the time that takes place in the Old Testament, a lot of the events, the people are suffering. And it is, it is such a human 
thing, a human instinct, a, a, a human desire to put the blame for that suffering on God. Why do good things happen or bad things happen to good people, right? Put the suffering on God. It's God's fault that the people were overrun by Babylon. It's God's fault that this happened or that happened. It's God's fault that they didn't have peace or the crops didn't come in or things like that. It's God's fault. It's God's fault that COVID came into the world. It's God's fault that I didn't do what my parents said and I turned out to be um, a villainous wreck. It's, it's God's fault that I'm not happy. It's God's fault. Blame God, right? He's the, all power, um, he's the all-powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing, all-seeing God of, of our fathers. He's the one who can do all things. If he would but do the thing that I ask, then perhaps and maybe then I would be happy. But what does God say through Isaiah, son of Oded? He says, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. See, Azariah goes on to point out that there was a time when the people were uh, without the true God. And without a teaching priest. And without the law. That is, there was, there was no teacher of God. No priest. No pastor to care for them. In the book of Judges is where this is most dominant. And that's what Azariah is speaking about. Uh, there were many places in the book of Judges where God's people did what was right in their own sight. They were not with God. So he was not with them. And during those times when a period of time had gone past when the people were like that, God would allow other nations to come in and attack his people, destroy his nations, begin overtaking them when they did what was right in their own sight. And then God would raise up a judge, which is a leader. And he would put a teaching priest back in the house, someone to teach them the law that they had been given. And the people would turn from the way that they do things back to the way God would do things. And the judge would overcome the enemy. That leader would overcome the enemy. You know, you can can think of Gideon. You can think of Samson, you know, Deborah. um, There's multiple judges we can talk of. Um, We read about one here a couple weeks ago. Um, And then... The people would remain faithful to God and there would be 40 years of peace and then that leader would die and the priest would pass on and people would again begin to do what was right in their own sight. They would no longer be with the Lord. They would no longer seek him. It wasn't that God did these things to them because he's an angry God. It's because we're a sinful people. It's because we turned away from him. We stopped seeking him. Right? That's, that's what's happening in old Israel. As we quit looking for God and began looking to our own ways to, to, to fix ourselves and to be what we wanted to be. Worship other gods that, that would give us the things we wanted, that would say the things we wanted to hear. Right? In Azaz's time, he gathers up all the people of, of God who are in the land and they, they make an oath to, con, to go back to seeking the Lord with all their heart and with all their mind, with all their soul. 35 years they have peace. 35 years they're at peace because their whole desire was to seek God. He even cast out his own mother, Makah, the queen mother, because she had made an Asherah, an image of a, of a pole uh, for the fertility gods. And he cut down that pole and he crushed it and he burned it in the brook of Kidron. Right? But the high places remained. There were, there were other people who didn't abide by this and, and the places of idol worship and false worship remained. Friends, our world is not unlike that today. You think about it a little bit. How many people read the scriptures and take them at face value? How many believe that God will punish sin? Uh, How many people live 
in the wisdom of the Lord that we talked about yesterday, which is the fear of God. Right? How many people understand that when God says something is wrong, it's wrong? How many people think that the God they've set up for themselves, the Christ, the Jesus they've set up for themselves, just wants them to be happy? Right? They don't have to worry about seeking him or doing the things that he said or, or listening to his word or being in his word. They just have to be happy, right? And Jesus will make them happy. They can, they can do whatever they want, right? Paul writes in one of his letters, he says, may, may, may we go on sinning that grace may abound? And then Paul says, certainly not. Most definitely not. He gives the harshest Greek negation he can to that. No, absolutely not. We don't go, so, go, on, we don't go on sinning that grace may abound. But we seek Christ. We seek our Heavenly Father through His Son who was sent to die and be raised from the dead for you. We seek to do God's will. We, he has made us into a new creation, not one that, that now seeks to do what we want. Not, not the carnal creature, but a new creature that lives in Him and rejoices in Him. That knows that what He calls us for, what He calls us to, is far better than what we want for ourselves. We are simulesta sepicata. We are simultaneously saints and sinners. We are at the same time uh, by the flesh the enemy of God, but he has created in us this new creature that seeks him, making us pure, washing away our sin by his blood in the water of our baptism and promising us, promising us everlasting life by the resurrection of his son. So seek the Lord, for the Lord is with you when you seek him. If you are with the Lord, he is with you. Right? Don't turn your back on him. If you turn your back on him, he won't be there, but he will be waiting. He will be waiting for you to turn back to him. Those of you who have internet like looking things up, look up the poem Butt Prince at some point. <laughs> I'll leave you to research that butt prince on your own. The Lord has us. He's purchased and won us by Christ's precious blood upon the cross. And he wants to be with us. And all we need to do is, is turn to him and seek him with how did, how did it go here? Uh, with, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, all our strength. Be in Christ and be safe. Let's continue with our catechism today which is the, the fifth commandment. Luther would ask, what is the fifth commandment? And you, of course, would answer, you shall not murder. Right? What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. Now, I always make a point here of, of mentioning with this commandment that is you shall not murder. Not you shall not kill, but you shall not murder. Right? The, the intentional harming of somebody else right? for for negative purposes, right? Not hunting, not fishing, not the, not the soldier who ordered by his government to kill the enemy, not the, um, not the police officer who in, in the line of duty of protecting other people shoots somebody uh, and kills them. You shall not murder. You shall not commit the wrongful death of somebody else. And listen to the meaning again. We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor, right? Those that we would do good to and would do good to us. Those who are in Christ and those who are with us. Those who are not enemies of God. Not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. All right, let's um, continue then with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for pardon, growth, and grace, and divine protect protection. O Lord our God, we acknowledge your great goodness toward us, and praise you for the mercy and grace that our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have known. We sincerely repent of the sins of this day and those in the past. Pardon our offenses, correct and reform what is lacking in us, and help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Inscribe your law upon our hearts and equip us to serve you with holy and blameless lives. May each day remind us of the coming of the night when no one can work. In the emptiness of this present age, keep us united by a living faith through the power of your Holy Spirit with him who is the resurrection and the life that we may escape the eternal pains of condemnation. By your Holy Spirit, bless the preaching of your word and the administration of your sacraments. Preserve these gifts to us and to all Christians. Guard and protect us from all danger of body and soul. Grant that we may, with faithful perseverance, receive from you our sorrows as well as our joys, knowing that health and sickness, riches and poverty, and all the things come by permission of your fatherly hand. Keep us this day under your protection and care. Preserve us, securely trusting in your everlasting goodness and love. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings and life may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Luther's little prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, this is Friday, so I will see you in my workshop tomorrow morning. Uh, we went a little long today, but I'm sure it was worth it. Uh, the peace of the Lord be with you, and keep your eyes on the cross of him who died and was raised again for you. God's peace.